we all care deeply about happiness for ourselves, for our loved ones, and um, we, we, we often don't think about it in the context of our sort of professional lives. And I think when we think of success, we're often thinking about our work, our status, our kind of achievements. But actually, there's a very strong driver where happiness leads to success. When we're able to feel more at peace with ourselves, happier, more psychologically well, we're actually more productive, we are better in our relationships, we're more creative, and many, many other things we care about in our lives go better as well. Some of the key sort of psychological needs that are absolutely essential for well-being are a sense of making progress towards kind of meaningful goals, connectedness to others, a sense of having supportive and constructive relationships, and a sense of autonomy, a sense of control over what or how we do our work. Those are things that make a real difference for both individuals, for teams, and for organisational success in the long term. It's often the day-to-day -day interactions we have in our team that are most important for that overall sense of, do I like what I do? Do I feel under pressure? Do I feel recognised? Do I feel trusted? And in fact, as, as a team member, as a colleague, and as a, as a sort of team leader or manager, we can do a huge amount to create that sort of microculture every day of how we feel about each other, just change the day-to-day -day experience of, of everyone. And if you imagine that organisations are nothing but clusters of people, this is a very powerful idea. So we all have a role to play. It really is a shared responsibility. And a very simple thing that we can all do is just make the time to look up and make a simple connection with a colleague, to sort of make eye contact, to say hello, to, to share a kind of sense of positive connection. Even if that's just for a few seconds, that does not only enhance our relationship with that person, but it changes that culture in that environment. Think about, well, what two or three things am I actually looking forward to this week? So often we're so focused on what might go wrong that we actually fail to spot kind of opportunities and, and spot good things that happen. And of course, lots of working weeks start with a sort of team meeting, a sort of catch up. And I think very often we slip into the right, right, what's on the agenda this week? What are the problems? What are the challenges? What do we need to do? All of which is really important. But actually, we have an opportunity in those sessions to, to sort of frame the way that the team collectively thinks about what they're doing. So we can start the week with, so what's gone well recently? What are we proud of about last week? And it creates a sense of pride, a sense of shared uh, achievement. And that can change the way that that team feels about what they do together. Then we're in a better space to deal with our problems. We're literally more creative, we see more options, we're more flexible in our thinking. So when it comes to getting onto the problems that the team's got to deal with that week, then we're better at dealing with those. And I think it's really important to note that these things are not just nice to have, they're not just like fluffy, fuzzy things. They actually have both psychological and physiological effects on us. We're told in society that you know, happiness and success comes from stuff and from wealth and material accumulation. But it's actually about our connections with ourselves, with each other and with a sense of meaning and purpose. That to me is the essence of what we're talking about.